Hello and welcome again. Uh, in this video I'm going to give you a couple of examples of small numbers where we're going to test uh, the Miller-Rabin uh, primality test for those specific numbers. Now uh, before I go into that, let's uh, just look again at the pseudocode here. I'm not going to go in detail again because uh, we did that uh, in the last video. Now one thing I want to mention though here is before you actually go into this if if and for loop, it's better that you pre-compute all these powers a to the p hat minus one modulo p hat and the ones that are here for the if. These ones that are here. And this ones. So all basically a to the two to the j uh, times r where j goes from one to u. Because when j is equal to u, it will give you exactly this a to the p hat minus one. And the reason you want to pre-compute that is because if you enter into this if loops here, there will be a lot of repetition of computation. So better before you actually start with this if, a line of code here, which I forgot to mention last time, is just pre-compute those powers uh, modulo p. And for, to do that, basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna just uh, use the square multiply algorithm or any method of fast model exponentiation. So I just want to mention that because this will be a lot of repetition here if we don't do that. So just pre-compute them over here. All right, so now that I mentioned that, let me go ahead and look at a couple of examples here where I'm gonna put down the uh, the small numbers. So I'm gonna give you the small number and the uh, security parameter. So let's look at this example. So the first example is apply the Miller and Ravin test to this p hat equals to 229 with security parameter s equal 4. So basically what we want is we want to check whether this number is a prime or not, this p hat, and the number of a's that we're going to choose between 2 and p hat minus 1 is going to be 4. That's why the security parameter, this is what the security parameter actually means. Okay, so remember the first thing you have to do is compute p hat minus 1, which is the number minus 1, 228, and you want to factor it in a way which is a power of 2 times an odd number. You could uh, factor this number, but it's not necessary. In fact, don't do it because it's going to slow down your process if you actually try to do that. So it's just enough that you put the r here. It's enough. So as you can see here, 228 is 2 squared times 57. So in this case, this exponent is the variable u, and this 57 is the variable r. The security parameter, as I mentioned, is the number of random numbers that we're going to choose from here, from 2 to 227. And the reason is from 2 to 227 is because it's always, remember, between 2 and p hat minus 2. That's 229 minus 2 is 227. So let's say, for example, we're going to choose four random numbers. So the first one's going to be 59, the second one is 79, the third one is 166, and the fourth one is 163. Now, you want to choose this at random. So you're going to if you implement this in a programming language, of course, you will have to use some random um, generation here, so ran num some random choice here that is uniformly distributed. So let's look at the first uh, A that we have here, 59. So the computation for A equals to 59. What is the first thing I have to do? I have to compute A to the p hat minus 1 modulo p. If that is not equal to 1, then I will say it's composite. That's exactly what the algorithm says here. Let me scroll up here for a second, and this is what the algorithm says. If that number is not congruent to 1 modulo p hat, then it's not a prime, it's not a prime, it's composite. So we'll, we'll compute that first in the algorithm. So let's see, so a to the p hat minus 1 modulo p hat is, uh, a here is 59 because this is the number that I'm choosing to the p hat minus 1, which is 228, because p hat minus 1, as you can see here, 228, modulo the number I want to check, 229. If you actually do this computation, whether you use maybe a computer to do this, or maybe Java, you're going to get uh, 1. So that means that the if loop uh, there, you don't go into that first if loop. So we're going to have to go into the second if loop. And let me scroll up again over here. So I'm going to go into the loop from j equals 1 to u. And I'm going to compute a to the 2j times r. And if it is congruent to 1 modulo p hat and the 1 uh, before it, the power of 2 before it times r is not congruent to plus or minus 1 modulo p hat, 
then we're going to return to this composite. So I'm going to do j equals 1 and j equals 2 because u in our case is 2. So let's do j equals 1 first. So for j equals 1, we're going to have to do a to the 2 to the 1 times r modulo p hat. Now remember this r is 57 and the a is 59. So a is 59. 59 then the R is 57 so it's going to be 59 to the 114 because it's 2 times 57 modulo 229 and then you actually look at that modulo that modulo is 228 so it's not congruent to one modulo um, uh, p hat so we don't enter into the fee if loop there so we're gonna go have to go again with j equals 2 this a to the 2 square r modulo p hat is 59 to 228 modulo this. This was already computed here, if you look at it. It's exactly the same computation. This computation here is exactly the same as that one. And that's equal to 1. That's why I told you earlier, before I started the computation, it's better you pre-compute these powers before you actually start doing it. I didn't do it here, but uh, it's better you pre-compute it and then you make the comparison. So that is equal to 1. So it's possible that I enter into the second if loop. Let me scroll up again. So we definitely are not in this first if loop. Now we're in this one, so I get congruent to 1, so I have to check that the minus 1 is not congruent to plus or minus 1 modulo p hat. And if it is not, then then we don't, uh, we don't say it's composite. So let's see here. So I'm going to compute uh, a to the 2 to the 2 minus 1 times r modulo p hat. I already computed this one in j equals 1 here and gives me 228. Now, 228 is congruent to negative 1 modulo p hat because uh, what is this p hat here? This p hat here is 229. Remember, these two numbers are congruent if this number 228 minus this number is divisible by p hat. And this is what happens here. 228 minus, minus 1 means 228 plus 1 is, of course, divisible by 2 uh, 29. So in that case, of course, then I'll have congruent to negative 1, so I don't go into the if loop. What that means is I'm done with this computation for this a, so I have to go to the other ones. I have to go to 79, 166, and 163. I have to do the other ones. Uh, let me do one more, and, and the other ones will be exactly the same thing. So uh, for a equals to 79, I have to compute a to the p hat minus 1 modulo p hat, and check uh, whether or not that's congruent to 1 modulo p hat. So, a is 79, 228, that's uh, modulo 229 is actually 1. So that means I don't enter in the first if loop, so I don't say it's composite. So now I have to go into the other if loop, for uh, the if loop that tells me whether or not it's composite as well. So I have an a for loop there, so for j equals 1 is a to the 2 to the first times r modulo p hat, the j here is for uh, the 1 that is there. So it's going to be 79 to the 114 modulo 229, that's 228. Now uh, I don't enter in that uh, loop because it's if loop, if uh, statement because I don't have this congruent to 1, so I don't do that. So now I go to j equals 2. I compute a to the 2 squared times r modulo p hat. This computation was already done here. It's exactly the same as 79 to the 228 modulo 229, which is this one right here, and I already knew this one. The next computation, a to the 2, two, mi two minus 1 times r modulo p hat, this I already did in the previous one, which is this one, for j equals 1, which is exactly this, two things exactly the same, 228, which is again congruent to negative 1 modulo p hat and remember in the previous one I said this is true. So I don't enter in that if statement either. So for now we don't we haven't checked that is composed. The other ones 166 and 163 uh, you will have to do the same and they will end up doing the same thing meaning that I can't conclude that is composite. So I'm not going to go into the details of those two because I hope you already got the idea. So for 166, do the same thing. You're going to make the conclusion. You see here, I didn't finish here because it's exactly the same thing. Uh, so it's not going to make any conclusions about being composite. For this one, same thing is going to happen. 
and because I went through the whole algorithm and I couldn't conclude that it's composite, then that means is that number is likely a prime. So the conclusion is we conclude that this number is likely a prime, 229, which is a prime, actually. This number, it is a prime. So the test didn't lie in this case. We wouldn't, we wouldn't expect that to lie with this uh, small number here. Um, Okay, so this an example was an example of uh, this number. It was a small number, and remember this is applied for large primes. So this is really not the uh, large computations that you will do if you were to actually check it in reality. And so that's why in these kinds of things you need fast modular exponentiation so that you can uh, make it a little bit faster. This this Miller-Rabin test. So let me give you just one more example. In this case, uh, it's gonna, gonna make the conclusion that is composite. So the second example is apply the miller rabin test to this number, 143, which created the parameter a is equal to three. So I'm gonna choose uh, three numbers from two to 141, which is the p hat minus two. So as always, we start with p hat minus one, which is 142, this is a number minus one. And I'm gonna factor it as a power of two times an e an odd number uh, here. So that's all I have to do. I don't need the complete factorization. So u is one, r is 71. The security par parameter is three. So that means I need to choose three random numbers from two to 141. And this is the random numbers I choose, 108, 124, and 89. So let's do the computations for the first one. So 188. So if I do 188 to the 142, which is p hat minus one, modulo p hat, that gives me 48. Well, what does that mean? I already got something that is not equal to one. So if I go scroll all the way up here to the algorithm, just to remind you what it is, uh, it's not congruent to one modulo p hat. So immediately I know that that number has to be composite. So let me scroll down again to that second example. And so the conclusion that we will make in that case is that the number is not, uh, it's not a prime number. And that's what we said here. So the number is composite and in reality is 143 is equal to 11 times 13. So that's it, the, the, uh, the algorithm has stops here because we already know that the number is composite and this is 100% sure that this number is composite. All right, so these are a couple of examples. Of course, numbers, numbers were small uh, because if you want to do the bigger numbers, you will really have to do this uh, in the computer. You can just do it by hand. It will take too long to do for you to do it. So before I uh, finish the video, let me talk about some characteristics of the Miller-Rabin test. So the first uh, characteristic is this. If the um, um, Miller-Rabin test here uh, says that p is composite, then it is for sure, in fact, composite. So it's not a prime, 100% sure. Another thing that is important to mention is this. If I have the miller raven test and I give it a prime number that I know is prime, so I use I use p, a number p as an input that I know is prime, the, the test will say that it is a prime, will always say that it is likely a prime. Now, that doesn't contradict anything that I just said before. It basically says, if you give it a prime, it will say it's a prime. The cases where it will lie will be, that will be number three here, which is this number. Let me put it down. This is number three. So the last part is there are composite numbers for which that test will say that is likely a prime. So this test will lie in the case that the, you give it a composite number and it will say that is likely a prime number. So that's the cases where it lies. And remember, uh, this case three happens uh, rarely, right? So the probability for that to happen is rarely, depending on, of course, on the security parameter S that you give it to the to the test. So, um, so I hope you uh, read this again and realize that they don't contradict uh, each other. One, two, and three are all perfectly uh, okay, they don't contradict each other. So think about it, uh, because for, sometimes it takes a little bit of time to understand why these things are not contradictory. So, but that's the Miller-Rabin test. Now, uh, what I'm gonna do in the next video, 
uh, is explain a little bit about the implementation of, of this uh, this algorithm in uh, the, in languages, in some languages, specifically in, in Java, of course, and how will you go about uh, writing your own kind of software to test something is uh, prime or not using the Miller-Rabin algorithm. So I will stop the video now and I will see you in the next video.